Hi everyone, and welcome back to Existential Physics with Ogar Plinkleton. I'm Ogar Plinkleton. Joining me today is my cousin Igar Plinkleton. Hey Igar. Hey Ogar. Igar is going to be assisting me with today's video, which I'm calling the magic of vector cross products. We're going to be demonstrating two cases of interacting vectors and show how these interactions manifest themselves physically. We're then going to show the mathematics behind these that describe what's going on. Um, but thanks again, Igar, for, for joining thanks, me Ogar. today. Uh, thanks for having me here today. I know it hasn't been easy for you to arrange my appearance here, given your current um, political and legal status. I hope that all works out. Igar, please don't discuss my legal status during the video, okay? Ogar, I'm so sorry. It, it won't happen again. Okay, okay. Hey, are the are the um, cameras rolling? Yeah? Okay. All right, we're back. And um, as I said, we're going to be doing the magic of vector cross products. Two different uh, ways we're going to look at it. And I'm going to explain what each one of these is and... What are you doing? I just thought I'd um, just kind of help. That's okay, okay. That, that's fine. Um, I was going to ask you to go and actually set up the equipment for demonstrating this cross product. Could you do that? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, great, okay. thank I'll, you. I'll, I'll go do that. Sorry. All right, um, anyway. I'm going to explain this um, right now, and I'm going to put up some neat diagrams. I'll do that very quickly. Okay, that's done, but I think I put too much information up here, and let me fix that. All right, this is, this is better. Um, here's our equation. The first term in this equation is the velocity vector of a moving electron, and we're just simply multiplying that by its um, fundamental charge, which is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulomb. That's that term. This term is the magnetic field, a magnetic field. And in this case, we're using a constant magnetic field. All right, and so we're crossing this with that. When a moving electron is subjected to a magnetic field, there's a force produced. And that's what this is, and it's force, um, I'm calling it sub M for magnetic. Um, the name for this is Lorentz force. Okay, so there's a force produced acting on the moving electron when it is uh, within a magnetic field. Okay, back to this, and now what we're going to be doing is we have an electron gun. And we're going to be shooting electrons. And the electrons are going to be going out in that direction from the electron gun. And that is the velocity vector here of a moving electron. So we're just literally shooting electrons out. Let me make that a little straighter here. But you notice we multiplied this, as I said, by its fundamental charge, which is a negative number. So this QV vector actually is in this direction. And that's QV. Okay, so that's what's happening when we turn on the electron gun. There is no magnetic field 
around it so the electrons move in a straight line. However, if we put the electron gun within the magnetic field, we're going to produce this force that's acting on the electron. So let me put some electrons here. Well, we'll put one here to start. We'll call that the electron. All right, we're going to be putting this electron within a magnetic field, a constant magnetic field in this case, and it's going to be producing a force, these two vectors, and that force is this force. Okay, so which we need to, so we need to know the direction of the magnetic field lines um, because we want to end up with what the direction of this vector is and so we're going to be introducing our electron moving electron to a constant magnetic field where the magnetic field lines are going into the board okay so the electric field, excuse me, the magnetic field is going into the board, the magnetic field lines. And we're encasing this whole thing in an evacuated glass tube. Okay, which actually looks like this and there's an electron gun inside there right there and the electrons will be exiting out here okay and that is our tube the tube itself is evacuated and then re the um, that we put in the tube is evacuated which means we've taken all the gas out. But we put a little bit of helium in there. And so this tube has a little bit of helium. And what you'll be seeing, which I'll show you, you can't actually see the electrons, but when they shoot out of here, they ionize the helium gas, which causes it to glow, um, the plasma to glow, uh, to glow. And so you'll actually be seeing the path of the electrons not the individual electrons, but you'll see the path where they're going. So we're going to be hooking this electron gun up and at first just shooting electrons. And you'll see that they come out in a straight line. Then we're going to introduce this magnetic field that again it's going to be acting into the board. Okay, we want to know the direction that this force is acting upon the electron and to do that, we use the right-hand rule. The right-hand rule is simply it's a great device to memorize how the directions of cross products, uh, the vectors, go. So, here's my right hand. Okay. And it's, we'll say this is one vector. My pointing finger is one vector. And going in that direction, my middle finger is the other vector going towards you in this case. And we cross them, and my thumb gives the direction. So if we had two vectors acting this direction, the ultimate um, resultant would be acting up. But we know that the magnetic field is acting into the board. So now I have this acting in. And the QV vector is acting in that direction and so my thumb is down and so the force the resultant force is acting down and that's F N okay so now the electrons are leaving and they're feeling this force and so they are being pushed towards the center of the center of the circle and as the electron moves around I'll put one here 
And again, remember the magnetic field. So the magnetic field lines are going in, and the force is acting down. It pushes the electron towards the center, and you'll notice that this force, as I come around, is always acting perpendicular. Okay, again, B is going in. The QB vector is this way. And the high right hand rule says the, this force is acting towards the center. And so, as long as we keep the magnetic field in place, these electrons are simply going to go around the circle, being forced into that circular motion by the Lorentz force or the magnetic force. And that's how we're going to demonstrate this, again, using this tube and the electron gun that's in it. Okay, let's go see if Igar has set up the equipment. Hey, Igar, is the equipment all set up? Yeah, it's, um, Great. it's all ready to go. Okay, are you ready to demonstrate it? Yep. All, all right, right, I'm going so to uh, go ahead move the camera, camera, get things set up, and then you can take it away and do the demonstration. Okay, here's our setup. On the left, we have a power supply providing a 300 volt potential to the electron gun. In the middle, we have two more power supplies in that box, one for the Hemholtz coils and one for the heating element of the electron gun. The Hemholtz coils are the round black things that you see, and they are wrapped with copper wire. And they're designed such that the radius of each one of the coils is equal to the distance between them. And with that geometry, when we introduce a current through the wire, the magnetic fields of each coil add up and they produce a constant magnetic field between the two coils that you can see there. To verify that with a compass, so I'm going to introduce current into the coils by rotating the knob right here. And if you look at the volt amp meter uh, on top, you'll see that we're going to be putting 1.24 amps of current through the coils. Now if I take the compass and just move it around the coils, you'll see the red arrow move around following the magnetic field lines and you'll see that they're constant in a straight line around that tube. And that's what we want for our cross product. And if I bring it out and take it around, you can see that the magnetic field line wraps around the coils. And then again, by the time you get into the back, it's straight on through. So I'm going to turn the current off. So I'll dial back the current to the Hemholtz coils to zero. And now that I've done that, I'll move the camera and set things up for the demonstration. I've moved the camera, and I'll ask um, Ogar, could you please turn off the lights? Thank you, Ogar. I'll turn on the electron gun, and you'll see the electron beam shoot out of it. And there it is. And that's without a magnetic field. Now I'm going to introduce some current to the Hemholtz coils, which will produce a magnetic field around the gun, and you'll see the beam reacting to the force that's produced. Slowly I increase the current, and the force gets greater and greater until it forces the beam into circular motion. Now I'll slowly decrease the current in the coils and you can see 
the force disappears, and now we're just back to the straight line. One more time, let's increase the current through the coils. And now the force is increasing as the magnetic field gets stronger and stronger until it again goes into circular motion. I'm going to increase the current as, there I, as high as it goes, and you can see the higher the force, the smaller the circle. And now I'm reducing it, and you can see as I reduce the current through the coils, the force disappears, and we go back to a beam shooting straight out of the gun. All right, All right turn it off. And Ogar, could you please turn the lights on? Great, thank you. Okay, that's it for this edition of Existential Physics with Ogar Plinkleton. Um, we cut this one short. We won't be able to do that second equation because Igar has been called away unexpectedly. Yeah, the, um, the helicopter's here. Um, I gotta go. So thank you again, Igar, for being here. And that's it until next time. Take care.